Welcome to Intro to Astro 2024. All right, so maybe we can get started. Um, yeah. So hello everyone. My name is Gibran Javla. I think some of you already know me from the last week's session and uh, where we discussed Unix and Git. Today I'll be talking about Python and a bit about Jupyter notebooks. And this, uh, like this particular notebook, is a bit intensive and it's really text heavy notebook so i'll not go into the exact details you can read this out on your own at your own time but i'll cover the you know like brief topics on what python is how we can use it and like what is the power of python like what all we can accomplish with it and then uh, what is your assignment and finally like what how we can use the job Jupyter notebooks as well so it will be a bit hands-on so if you do have python installed already on your computers you can follow along whenever we switch to the dummy all right so starting on python is a high level programming language and what that means is like we discussed unix last week where we talked about some commands that we give to the computer and then just request everyone to please stay on mute yeah, thank you yeah so we discussed unix last uh, week where we discussed that it takes in bunch of commands and executes them um, directly on the command line interface now when we talk about python it says that it's a high level programming language which means like in very layman terms it means it's a very complex uh, you know programming language which takes on more complex set of command which again are in a particular syntax that is a bit different from unix uh, where unix can be compared to a more bare bones kind of command structure while python is more you know has a greater layer of abstraction over it and can achieve much more like complex functions complex things through it um, where unix is better in terms of usage is it is really fast it is really fast as compared to python but where python outshines unix is the functionality that it delivers all right so it also has a particular syntax as we just talked about and you can uh, you know like we did in unix we can echo something on the screen in a similar way we can print our whatever string we want to print so here i am printing my own name that is Ethan. Uh, with the keyword keyword print and this print is the syntax for doing that that thing right so every command in python you can call it as a statement and then statement grouping in python like in a script whenever we are grouping some commands in unix in similar way in python we can group some commands or the statements and that is done using indentation that means we put in some tabs uh, to indent things and new commands are again separated by new lines. So very, very much similar to how we do it in Unix. Now, Python also has one more thing, which is called object-oriented programming, in which we can make uh, objects which has have some pro properties, like it has some abstraction, it has encapsulation, it has uh, reprodu reproducibility. So these are all properties on, of an object, but what you need to understand over here is we can make new objects of code in python that can take on certain functionality and that functionality can be used in a modular way in numerous numerous situations and then over here we have like written what is the difference between unix and python which are, which we already discussed um, that unix scripts are based at like changing text data due to the high speeds so it's more useful over there but python has a huge variety of uses which we'll discuss in a bit all right so first of all let's start with the distribution and anaconda dis what is anaconda distribution but to know what is the distribution we must know like what are functions modules and packages in python and a function in a python python is something that can take on an input and that gives us an output by processing a bunch of commands right so again like in unix when you put in a bunch of commands uh, to perform a task that can be grouped as a function that takes on an input and that can give an output now when we bunch in a part, like when we bunch in these 
uh, functions into a you know into a more useful module that means it we are bunching in some kind of some typical kind of functions together so let's say that i want to do some task that is related to working with a particular satellite let's say it is and all the data that i need to use for that i can bunch in those functions into a single file and call it a module that has similar set of functions to perform or to perform some tasks and when we bunch in a lot of these files together that is called a package so a package in all is kind of a end to end you know be useful to build that someone like you or me can build on python and it it will have a bunch of modules which are files and those files will have internally a bunch of functions which can do certain things by taking in inputs and taking uh, like giving out outputs and those functions in in themselves are a bunch of statements that we that can be used to solve certain things so these packages that you and i are developing these can be you know distributed via distributions and this is what a distribution is it bunch bunch in a huge ton of packages into a single you know into a single distribution and anaconda is one such distribution which you know which has all these useful packages that are used in python generally by astronomers and scientists overall so you can download this distribution for python and it, it will get you the uh, required packages for the whole workshop i'd say and even as well um here's the link you can go there to the website and follow and their instructions if you are low on storage you can go with mini conda um which is a minimal installation uh, like it has some less packages than the whole installation but if you have space you can go with anaconda distribution all right moving forward yeah so anaconda also has one more thing so what it does is it can create some isolated workspaces for you and what that means is let's say that i am working on intro to astro workshop i can create a workspace which has packages that i need for this particular workshop now when i go on to another workshop i work on a different project that does not need all those uh, packages i can have an i can have a very isolated space where i like install certain versions of certain packages only and those will be very those will be isolated from the ones that are for intro to astro so in a way it, it helps you organize your projects uh, and the packages that are required in so that there is no conflicts or there are no version issues further on so let's see how we can use python hands on i'll just open my terminal again it can be used through a terminal it can be used through other other sources as well it can we can make scripts and we'll just talk about them in a minute so if you were to see here it's written base over here base means that i have installed anaconda installation on my laptop and this base is one of those uh, isolated workspaces that i just talked about the base workspace that i'm right now working on and if i were to write python on my uh, terminal and this will work for both windows and mac it should open up my python so not right now i can see the version of my python is 3.8.5 i can now write in my commands over here and also you can see i have this anaconda distribution installed over here so now i can write my statement so let's start with print and let me print hello intro to astro participants so this is a string that i want to output and i wrote a function this function was print it took in an input which was this string and every input can be put in those these parentheses if i press enter then it will print this statement hello into to astro participant if i were to also use a package so i can use a package that is built by me or by someone else and these some packages built by someone else uh, can be open source that means they are free to use by anyone so the and, and python also has certain packages that are inbuilt so let me try and use one package which is called os if i have to use a package i use this statement import that means that 
all the functions that were present in OS will now get imported in my current environment, in my current Python. Okay, and if I try to use a function from this particular um, package, which is OS dot, that means that I'm using a function that is present in this package. I'll write OS dot and then the function name, let's say get CWT. This gets me the current working directory. Similar to what we did in Unix, we tried to type out the present working directory. So it will tell me where I am currently in my computer. All right, so we have already done two things with Python. Let's move on and see what else can we do. I'll just write one more command. So we can also do some arithmetic that we can also do with Unix. And let me type in one plus two. It gives me three. All right, let me move back to this. So we already tried all these things till here. Yeah. Now, if what if I want to do this via a text file? I mean, I want to have a bunch of commands execute at the same time, not in a manner that one statement gives me one output, like I was just doing on my uh, Unix. So for that, I can make a text file or more more appropriately the text file should have a dot py extension at the end so that becomes a python file and it's a script similar to how we did uh, what we did in unix that means it bunches in a uh, couple of commands or statements to get certain outputs and it those all statements could be executed at once like one by one and this can be done using a text editor and sublime is one text editor that is very minimal and very good for use and i can show that to you as well sublime yep so this is a sub this is sublime text editor i have some installations pending but what we want to do is we want to do one plus two okay this is a new installation here yeah, it's kind of updating but yeah. um, I want to print this and let me print this string or let me do one more thing let's create in variables and let me also tell you what variables are so Variables are kind of placeholders in our memory in Python that can take a value and that value can be an integer, it can be a decimal or it can be something in a text format. So let's say I put in A as 1 and B as 2 and I'll print A plus B and it should give me 1 plus 2 that is 3. Right and this is a text file that I just created. I this now what is the use of this text editor sublime text you can you know uh, do things like you can have build system so that means you can do uh, run the code over here as well you can view your particular uh, text file in a given format I can select the syntax as python because I'm working in python and it color codes everything that makes it easier for us to read and understand the code so you can see all functions are print, like written in blue all strings are written in yellow and so on and then I can also do the build so that would actually run this whole code in the editor itself um I think there was some issue to, to, to yeah, I guess there was some issue. I'll, there is some installation issue, but yeah, let me show this to you. Otherwise, let me go to intro to Astro Python and let's do test Python. So I am storing this as a .py file, which is a Python file that I can execute later. Let's store it. So I have this file stored. If I want to execute this file, let's go into this particular. Um, folder I'm in week 2 sorry and then I need to run test python so I'll write 
python and then the file name and it should run this thing so it is printing 3 which is a plus b and then it is printing welcome to intro to astro so you can see i did two things at once which i would which i was doing one by one so this two was here and then this was here right um this is a python script moving back yep so you can see this python script was useful for executing a bunch of commands together but what about having some more information inside this uh, particular script over there jupyter notebooks are really useful what you are seeing right now is a jupyter notebook um, over jupyter notebook we can have images we can have videos as well we can embed things so we over here you saw a website that was being embedded and you can click everything over here this is all operational right um, and you can execute code in here so this thing that we can we just talked about i made a and b as two variables and i'm printing out the sum difference division and multiplication of these two variables and if i were to run this i can do run and this should run over here and this output was just generated uh, again all right so this is jupyter notebook and its use is you can see it's very useful in a way that we can have text we can have code that can run we can have images and uh, web embeds and so on in one place so in that way it is also really useful and how to open this up so i can move on to a term terminal let me open my terminal yeah i'll just go into this folder um so currently i am in let's see where i am ewt i am in intro to astro 2024 folder which is the git folder for our workshop um and if i were to uh, run jupyter notebook so i can simply write jupyter notebook that should open up this jupyter notebook over a f uh, over a web page which is locally hosted on my computer only it's not on the internet and then i can go to wake to python and then you can see some bunch of um, python notebooks and over here i have this python and jupyter intro ipynb which i have already opened over here and this is a jupyter notebook that we can run we have some other functions over here as well so each block can be run or stopped or rerun in a way these blocks can be turned up or down so i i can do this and this like wherever i want to place the block then there are some copy and edit commands for there um you can also see this kernel thing so what this kernel means is that uh this jupyter notebook at the back end is connected to a python uh python instance and you can interrupt or restart that instance in case something goes wrong all right moving on i'll just move on um there is one more helpful thing over here if there is a function that you need to know what what it does what inputs it takes and so on you can write this particular command uh, question mark at the start of the function name and then run this and it will tell you what this does in, like, based on the documentation that the author has given all right and now we have just two two more things before we close this session um one is talking about the power of python and by that i mean i will we'll just so before we move forward this is something that will be discussed in detail in the coming weeks and you will be making those plots as well for now it's just for purpose of uh, telling you how powerful python is and how easy it is to implement these things in python so over here i what i am doing is we are, i am reading in the data of 20000 stars from gaia and that data is uh, has 97 columns of data and to 20000 rows of course and i am figuring uh, i am making a figure out, out of those so that i can get the positions of all these stars in a manner so the these are ra right ascension and declination which are kind of coordinates of the star in this uh, coordinates of the stars in the sky and this is how it can be plotted and let me run it for you right now so if i were to press run you can see it oh wow well, it throws an error i'm sorry um no file okay i'll have to put that file over here again but yeah um, i'll just show this over here 
I think I deleted some files over GitHub. But uh, this runs in under a second, and you can see how, how, like how it can deliver such excellent results in such a small lines of code. And this is possible because we have packages and we have inbuilt functions and we have open source packages, especially in Python. And even I have similar thing in 3D. So this whole diagram is doing the same thing. It's just in 3D and it is having some extra bunch of information like the temperatures of stars are color coded and the positions are like in three three dimensions. Also, the sizes of the stars are like relative. So uh, the bigger dots are the bigger stars, while the smaller dots are the smaller stars. And then moving on, we have Google Colab and Jupyter Lab. So these are online hosted Jupyter notebooks. In case you do not have a really powerful laptop, or uh, I mean, this works with a very minimal setup as well. But if you want to still work on internet and use resources that are freely provided by Google or Jupyter Lab, you can also use these Google Colab and Jupyter Lab, which are basically online Jupyter notebooks. And then lastly, we have an assignment. So this is software data carpentry. Uh, again, similar to what we did for Unix. Your assignment is simply to um, get all the plots that you make out of this workshop and post it on the assignments folder. And yeah, this is pretty much it. Yeah, hey, you can take it over. And for any questions, you can do write in chat and I'll answer them. Thank you so much, Shinan. Uh, maybe we should pause for questions for this session. Yep, sure. Folks, if you have questions, feel free to post in the chat or unmute yourself. I think there's a question. Is there a difference between echo and print? Yep, so right. Echo is basically used in Unix, whereas print is a function that is used in Python. So first of all, this is one difference. Secondly, echo is a command that means it it just uh, takes in that particular thing, uh, whatever we are writing after it. Print is a function. So it's a function that means it can be modified. The functionality of function can always be modified. Now, print is actually a, an inbuilt, inbuilt function. However, Python is built such that you can even change the inbuilt functions. And that is how, uh, that is something that is very different from Unix. The more, like how, how, far we can go in changing the source code right so if there is an, another function that is similar to print it will be in a very similar syntax that i just showed you um, and i'll just share my screen for that give me a second um, right so over here you can see even this is a function i am plotting this figure using a function which is figure and it is taking in a bunch of inputs to process things so this is a function now you can also build functions in uh, unix but echo is not a function echo in um, unix is a command it does not take in multiple inputs and multiple outputs and it cannot be changed basically this aspect of changing it makes it a function okay Thanks. I think I saw uh, posting this uh, Jupyter notebook on GitHub. So I've already done this like just before this uh, session on intro to Astro. Um, I have put it in week two. I think I need to open up a pull request, but yeah, I'll put it over here. Yeah, I haven't put that yet. I, I'll open up a pull request and this will be uploaded just right after this session. <clears throat> so another question from uh, Kriti, what do astronomer usually prefer? Jupyter Notebook or something else? Some other IDE? 
um so it depends i i definitely prefer jupiter notebook when i'm working on testing something out um this is from my personal experience and i think fay and others might uh, it might vary but yeah uh, for myself it's using jupiter notebook still i'm working on something that i need to test out i mean when i'm working with let's say data for five stars but when i want to scale it to let's say 1000 stars or 10000 stars or when we are moving to high performance clusters when we have to you know work on much larger data and it needs much larger processing capacity we go, we go to high performance clusters which are basically supercomputers and over there it's it's no use to use jupyter notebook we have to make scripts and those scripts are just directly used as as such so it, those are just dot py files that can be edited using any text editor and personally i use sublime text for that um also from equity uh python is a high level language is there a more rudimentary computer language that we should learn unix is a very rudimentary language in in comparison to python so unix is a very good start because the more high level you go it's more functional a language becomes more functional the amount of things that you can do with it becomes more functional but as you go to more rudimentary languages like c or maybe like unix scripting you are allowed more you know you, those are more faster so you are allowed to do data manipulations much faster and those are used really well in, in in the industry when we are talking about text data that we want to edit so for example i want to edit large text files for uh, data of data of stars i'll use unix but if i want to plot that data into graphs and if i want to make scientific figures out of it i'll definitely go with python register now on bit.ly/intro2astro2024